Hello folks, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to talk about Cloud Development Kit CDK, which is a new framework Amazon has released to make the developer life easy and you can write code in a high level language. So far, you might have been writing code for provisioning an EC2 instance or creating a VPC or DynamoDB tables using CloudFormation or Terraform or any of the other provisioning tools that are available in the market. But the problem with these tools is that you write a lot of code to achieve a very simple activity. For example, if you want to create a VPC, you're typically writing about 300 lines of code and you are thinking about what is going to be my VPC CIDR ranges, what is going to be my subnet, whether it is public or private, or do I need a NAT gateway? How do I provision a NAT gateway at high availability? All those things. What CDK does is it allows you to create these resources in the language that the developer is already comfortable. For example, if you're writing application in Java or Python or TypeScript, you can use the same language to create your provisioning resources. So no longer the developer has to learn another language or another format like CloudFormation or Terraform. They can continue using the same language that they have been familiar with. They can use any IDs like Visual Studio Code or Eclipse or any of the IDs that they are familiar with to accelerate the deployment of cloud resources. Basically your cloud formation is going to be the assembly language of cloud of the future and almost all the resources in the future is going to be deployed using CDK. So I highly recommend you to guys have to have a look into that. In today's demo I'm going to show you how to create a simple VPC using this CDK tool. GitHub article that is going to help us walk us through this custom VPC demo. All the necessary steps from installation, running the commands and including a VPC code is all documented here. You can just follow along me by following this article. If you're ever stuck there, just go ahead and copy paste the command here or just go ahead and try to redo it. It should be very simple. You should be get going and running and creating a custom VPC in about 5-10 minutes. And we all do this in just about 10 lines of code. Typically, if you're writing a cloud formation for creating a VPC, which is spanning across two ACs and multiple subnets are to be required. And if you want to create internet gateway, the template will be usually about 300 lines long and getting it right in the first time is almost impossible. But with CDK, with 10 to 15 lines of code, we will be able to accomplish that in about five to 10 minutes. So let us go ahead and see how we can do this. So basically, first we will be starting with the installation of CDK here and we will be using the npm packages if you don't have npm or node in your uh, laptop or computer just go ahead and install it it should be very easy and straightforward um, the necessary instructions will should be you should be able to find it in google so once you have node installed then go ahead and install npm and then check the versions then we will start writing the code that we see here Basically, we we'll create a custom VPC, say that our language is going to be Python. We activate the virtual environment so all the dependency packages can be installed inside the virtual environment without corrupting your base OS or operating system that you are working upon. And since we are going to create a VPC, we need the modular package that is uh, EC2 under which the VPC is there. So we are just going to tell CDK that this is the package I need for this VPC creation and then we are going to install that package inside our virtual environment then you write the code so if you can see here this is hardly about seven lines of code and which is going to create our public private VPCs and if you want to net gateways just go ahead and change the number from zero to one or two if you want high availability that's all it's required once we do this CDK is going to spit out and cloud formation template which will automatically be uploaded to our account and created for example, if I go to my account right now, there are no stacks created. And likewise, if I go to my S3 bucket, there are no templates which are related to CDK. So what CDK will do is it is going to generate a cloud formation template, upload it into my S3 bucket, and it will also use cloud formation service to deploy that uh, template and automatically it will provision the resources also. So let us go ahead and do this in our account. If you're familiar with Eclipse or some other ID that you are comfortable with, go ahead and use them. It should all give the same experience and CDK works with almost all of them with some autocomplete plugins and that should really help you in knowing what resources to be created if you are in doubt. So the, as the first step, let us go ahead and install it. Once the installation is completed, let us verify the version and then we'll create our custom VPC folder. So if we get the version number, that means our installation is complete. There are no problems with that. So I'm just going to create the directory for custom VPC. 
And now I'm going to use CDK to initialize my custom VPC folder with the necessary folder structure. And I'm going to say to CDK that I want to do the folder structure for the Python language format. So you can see here, you will see some necessary folders to be created, including a virtual environment, which we will be using for developing our custom VPC along with the necessary packages. So now you see here, it also gives me the friendly uh, information of how you can use CDK. We can just do the LS and then we can do a synth and all those things. So let us first activate our virtual environment because all the th activities that we need to do from here on is should be inside our virtual environment. So basically under this ENV environment, you will have an activate package. So let us do that. And if I go ahead and look at my requirements, as of now, this is a blank template. I'm not saying which application I'm going to write or which resource I'm going to use. So CDK doesn't know what dependencies to install. So it has left it empty, but we know that we are going to create a custom VPC. So I'm just going to add the necessary uh, line into the requirements folder. So once we do that, we can use pip to install the AWS uh, EC2 package here. So our uh, AWS uh, EC2 package is also installed. We are all set for going ahead and writing our code. So you can see here there is a very important file called as app.py. Let me just bring it down a bit. So this is the most important file that CDK is using to create an application and synthesizing the CloudFormation template. But we don't have to modify anything here. All the activities or all the code that we need to write are under this directory. And if you go here, there is something called as custom VPC stack. And as you can see here, the code that defines your stack goes here. So everything that needs to be written is going to be written here. There's one small change that we need to do. Apart from core, we also need the AWS EC2 package. Just I'm going to say AWS EC2 as EC2. Once we add that, we're just going to close this out. And we are going to create our VPC now. Let us focus on the VPC code. I am literally verbatim taking the code from my GitHub repository and using it. And I'm just going to walk you through with all the code so that we can save some time here. Basically, what we are going to say is this is self. That means that within this stack, I want to create this VPC. So you can just leave it as it is. You don't have to touch anything here. Then you are going to say what you want to name your VPC. For example, if I'm going to say this as Constone VPC, this name will be used for referring this VPC in future. And here I'm just having a CIDR range saying as 10.13.0. You can have any CID range that you want. That is all you need to give and how many AZs you want to deploy this. I'm going to use Virginia as my region, which has more than two availability zones. But for this demo, I'm just going to say two here. If you want in your production case or your experiment, if you want to do it across multiple AZs, just go ahead and change this number and make sure that your subnet uh, CIDR or for the entire VPC is big enough so that it can be split into as many subnets. So the next step is NAT gateways. I don't want NAT gateways. I just want to show you guys how to create a custom VPC with the necessary subnets, with the necessary NACLs, with the necessary uh, security groups, internet gateways, routing tables, and everything. So under subnet configuration, we are going to create a two subnets. One is going to be called, uh, one is going to be public. That means that an internet gateway will definitely be a, attached to this subnet. So if you just scroll to the right, this is the most important the keyword. It makes this subnet public. That means that an internet routing uh, will be attached to this subnet. So if you launch any instance here, you should be able to browse the internet or connect to from that instance from the internet. And I'm having another subnet called as isolated. What it means is you are going to have a database instances which want to be communicating to your application servers. Then I'm going to have an isolated uh, subnet for that. So I have commented out this line. This is the private instance. If you want, you can go ahead and do that, but that will also create your NAT gateways. But since we are not interested in seeing NAT gateways in this demo, I just commented out that line and removed the NAT gateways. So basically, if you just enable this one, you will have a NAT gateway installed in your account as well. And you will have the EAPs and everything. So let us not do that. If we, in case you want to go ahead and tag them also, it is really easy. So that's all here. I'm just going to save this file. You can see here, there's a dot here. I'm just going to save this file. And once we save this file, we can just go ahead and verify if everything is good. If you do CDK LS, and if you're not getting any error, that means that our template structure is correct, the syntax is correct, and we are ready to 
push this template into the AWS uh, CloudFormation resource. So before doing that, we need to do something called a CDK synth, but it is not necessary when you do the deployment, the synthesizing of this template into a CloudFormation automatically happens. But let us see what happens here since we are doing it for the first time. If you do a CDK synth, it is going to generate a CloudFormation template and automatically you will have another file here under CDK out and you can use this template directly also. You don't have to use CDK. The entire VPC code that is required is being generated here for us. You can see here typically it just runs about uh, close to 390 lines for just creating the simple VPC for us, including the VPC gateway attachment, the routing tables and everything. But since we are not focused on writing cloud formation, we are just going to leave it as it is and we are going to do CDK bootstrap. What this means that CDK creates the necessary resources on the cloud first, that is it will create an S3 bucket which it will control where it can upload this template that has been created and then it will use that template to deploy the resources. So if I take you back to my AWS account, here if I just refresh my screen, there will be, you can see here there is a CDK toolkit template has been deployed and if I go to resources, you can see here that it's creating and staging bucket. So let us just go ahead and quickly and refresh our screen to see if we can see that bucket. You can see here there is a bucket that has been created and this bucket is where my templates will be temporarily stored and deployed into my account. So now we are done with this one and our toolkit is also bootstrapped. So all we have to left out to do is go ahead and do CDK deploy. And when you do deploy for the first time, it is going to ask you some questions. For example, if you're going to do an uh, IAM role or if you're going to create a uh, security group which is allowing uh, unlimited access, it will ask you the question, do you want to really do that? So there are a lot of best practices built into CDK to avoid you making into uh, resources which can create vulnerability in your account. So in this case, we are just creating a VPC and uh, since there are no IAM roles or elevated privileges it is not asking us that question but when you just in the next demo or in the future I'll be showing you how to create an EC2 instance with some IAM roles and uh, some permissions then it will ask you the question do you want to create that and you, you need to manually go ahead and say yes I want to create those resources so you can see here the resources are getting created let us go to our uh, dashboard and see what is happening there so if I go to my uh, cloud formation you can see here my custom VPC is getting created so already some resources have already been created you can see here this is create complete create complete let us go to our VPC dashboard and refresh our screen so here we have our custom constant VPC let it stay there what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to filter for that so it's not available let me just refresh my screen so once it is there if I go to my subnets you can see here automatically I have four subnets that has been created in different availability zones. So and they are also being tagged appropriately. You can see here public subnet and if I go ahead and choose them, you can see this is in US 1A and this one must be in 1. Uh, this one is uh, private subnet, this one is public, this one is private. So both of them are listed as 1A. Yeah, these two must be 1B in that case. Yeah, this is 1B and this one also must be 1B. Likewise, if I go to my internet gateways, there must be one internet gateway here. Let us go ahead and check out whether our tags have been added. If you remember, we added some tags that should be attached to all the resources which are part of this VPC. You can see here the name tag and the owner tag has been automatically attached. So you don't have to manually attach them to all the resources. It gets done automatically. Likewise, if I go to my um, routing table, I should be able to see the necessary routes for public and private uh, subnets. So what I'm going to do is you can see here there are no uh, subnets attached to my main routing table. So basically because I have a public uh, subnet separately and then there is some routes attached to it. Uh, let us go to my public one. Yeah, you can see here there's an internet gateway route attached to it. And for private, since we did not deploy the isolated uh, sub or since we did not do the middle tier, there is no routing attached for that. So once you do that, all the routings and the necessary security groups are also created for you. For now, since we did not mention anything, the default security groups will be created for you, which is inbound, is uh, 
within the security group and outbound is to the world. Likewise, in NACL, we should be able to have an inbound from everywhere and outbound to everywhere. So these are the default rules in any default VPC. If you want to customize them, you can go ahead and customize them. So basically, if you notice it, we just wrote about uh, 10, 15 lines of code. If you can, let us go ahead and check it out quickly. We should have it here. We should have it here. And we hardly wrote about 23 lines of code, but the actual lines that we wrote is from 10. So that's about 10 lines of code and you get a nice VPC created for you. So I highly recommend you guys to go ahead and try it in your account, get familiarized with CDK. Unless there is something not working in CDK, you will not be using CloudFormation at all. So if you want to stay in this cloud era, go ahead and try CDK now. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.